HBO's Westworld has naked androids, player pianos, and Anthony Hopkins in his best role since Hannibal Lecter. Draw. But 43 years before that, Westworld was on the big screen, the directorial debut of novelist Michael Crichton. The easiest description of Westworld is like Jurassic Park, only with cowboys instead of dinosaurs. Yeah, but since Jurassic Park came out 20 years later, shouldn't it be the one referred to as, like Westworld, only with dinosaurs instead of cowboys? Yeah, well, Westworld wasn't as popular as Jurassic Park. Made in 1973, Westworld is close to 50 years old. If you watch it, which I recommend, you may find yourself asking, who are these people? The lead character is played by Richard Benjamin. Believe it or not, this guy used to be a prolific movie star, appearing in everything from Catch-22 to Saturday the 14th. In the early 80s, he became a director, giving us the money pit. It's the comedy that throws everything at you, including the kitchen sink. My Stepmother is an Alien, Milk Money, and a bunch of other movies Siskel and Ebert gave two thumbs down to. The movie takes place in a fantastical theme park where wealthy people get to spend a weekend in Roman World, Medieval World, or West World. You can dress up in period clothing and pretend you're back in the good old days when no one brushed their teeth, wiped their ass, or were immunized against infectious diseases. The best part is, there are no human actors in the park. Those old cowpokes and gunslingers are realistic androids, so you can blow them away without any of the pesky legal and moral ramifications that come with cold-blooded murder. It's fun, just like shooting someone for real. The gunslinger is played by Yul Brenner, best known for a series of commercials he filmed while he was dying of lung cancer to be aired after his death. Now that I'm gone, I tell you, don't smoke. Whatever you do, just don't smoke. But before he was the creepy dead guy on your TV, Yule Brenner was the king, the pharaoh, and one of the Magnificent Seven. His appearance in Westworld is based on his Magnificent Seven character. The park is designed so there is no way Richard Benjamin can lose a gunfight. First, the gunslinger has been programmed with really slow, crappy fighting technique. And even if by some miracle the gunslinger manages to aim correctly, the gun has a sensing device. It won't fire at anything with high body temperature. Only something cold like a machine. After a nice dinner, our two guys head back into town to check out the Westworld Whorehouse. I understand people having fun killing the robots, but would you really want to have sex with one of those things? How do you know they remembered to clean up after the last guy? Wouldn't you be worried about snagging your dick on a loose spring and ripping it off? At night, when the park shuts down, the robots are collected and given a tune-up for the next day. We aren't dealing with ordinary machines here. These are highly complicated pieces of equipment. Yeah, delicate machines you let random creeps fuck every day. Of course, something goes wrong. Let me guess. The androids become self-aware, leading to a revolt? which causes their human counterparts to grapple with the moral, philosophical, and, dare I say it, religious implications of the human consciousness? Close. The power goes out. The relays must be frozen. We can't get back our power. Hello. Hello. I know a power outage sounds pretty low stakes for the climax of your big science fiction movie, but that's pretty much what happens. Sir, we have no control over the robots at all. Check out the gunslinger's gun. The heat sensor doesn't work anymore, so now it's capable of firing on humans and killing them. What kind of dumb system is that? Why not give the androids fake guns? Or if you have to give them real guns, how about no bullets? A computer virus spreads through the park, making the androids more aggressive. In medieval world, the swords are swinging. In Roman world, the slaves are revolting. And in Westworld, the gunslinger is hunting Richard Benjamin through the empty park. I question the financial stability of Westworld. As far as I can tell, the only customers are these two and some goofy banker. At Dallas, you get your choice of the vacation you want. There's Medieval World, Roman World, and of course, Westworld. Was it worth a thousand dollars a day? How is their three thousand dollars paying for all this damage? 
dozens of androids, and huge staff of technicians working around the clock. No wonder the power went off. They probably haven't paid the bill in months. So how are we going to get out of here? All these doors are electrically powered. I get these doors open in here before we all suffocate. You got all these eggheads, and not one of them can figure out how to MacGyver a way to open the door? The technicians are surprisingly fatalistic. They don't even try breaking it down. Everyone is just, oh well, and sits at their consoles waiting to die. The best thing about Westworld is the presence of Yule Brenner. He is amazingly effective as the gunslinger. Creepy. Relentless. I have no doubt in my mind Arnold Schwarzenegger studied this movie carefully, as his entire performance in the original Terminator seems to mimic Yule Brenner in Westworld. Draw. The best part of Westworld is its brevity. Unlike movies today, which all need to be at least two hours long, Westworld is a scant 89 minutes. The HBO show has the potential to drag on for years, but the movie tells pretty much the same story quick, and you can get on with your life. Thank you very much. Yeah. Shenanigans. It's been a lot of fun, shenanigans. But now we've got to run. It's funny how the minutes seem to fly.